The Budweiser Shootout from Daytona International Speedway brought to you by Bank of America, higher standards. By Pizza Hut, home of the new Cheesy Bites Pizza, a pull-apart crust with 28 cheese-filled bites. Gather round the good stuff. And by Napa Auto Parts. Napa, get the good stuff. A lot of good stuff you going get the on. Good around stuff there. everywhere you around sure here, do, especially here at Daytona. Field back out on the track, still under caution. Here is what we've seen so far. 21 cars rolling off for the 28th edition of the Budweiser Shootout with 50-year-old Ken Schrader on the pole. Then here comes trouble. The 25 car gets goes in the left side of the 12 and bangs him, and around he goes in the inside wall. Another shot is the five. Pounds the back of that 25. 29 car, Kevin Harvick. He had, it sounded like engine problems. They weren't sure if it was rear end or engine, but I guess it's going to be the engine after all. Level down the old Reese's machine. And this was supposed to be a night race, but instead it's a late afternoon race. Scott Riggs got some tape on his visor. Trying to keep the sun out of his eyes. Trying to put it a little bit lower, I guess. Is he doing driving with his knees there? Yep. Feel getting lined up. We're getting ready to go green flag racing. We'll take a break. A break. Come back to Daytona for the Budweiser shootout on TNT. Hey, NASCAR fans, follow your favorite driver with the Nextel Track Pass. Test drive track pass for free during speed weeks. Just go to NASCAR.com. That is a lot of fun playing with that thing. My favorite word, free. <laughs> What's your favorite word? Let's check in with Marty Snyder. Well, Bill, the combination of Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson have worked their way to the front, but now Jeff has told Jimmy, let's be every man for themselves. The other thing I was going to say is uh, I was going to pass the message along to Jimmy that, you know, when he gets out in the lead like he, he had, I appreciate him trying to help me out, but he's going you know, to do what he needs to do. I want him to keep that lead. I don't want him to worry too much about me. I'm going to wander down a pit box and talk to him. And both of those cars are so strong. In fact, Ken Schrader came on the radio and said, you know, I've been here a few times before, and in my past experiences, I think that 24 car is a pretty one, to good, pretty one good one to be around. Matt? Tony Stewart, the 20 car, two-time winner of this event, equates it more like a chess match, knowing you have to put yourself in position to win, and that starts with the final pit stop. Look for the 20 at this juncture to work with a 21 of Schrader and his teammate, the young rookie, Denny Hamlin, in the 11 car. Dave? Matt Kyle Busch had significant damage on the front end, especially in the grill area where the air goes in. This is the junk that they tore out of there that used to be the grill. They had another nose in the back of the garage. They cut the entire piece out with the grill in it and put it on the five car. He has clean air going to the motor again. Bill? Thanks, Dave. 50 laps to go in the Budweiser shootout. We're under green. Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car on the high side. Ken Schrader in the 21. Wow, looked like the 48 car was going to drive by the 21 on the outside, and I don't know. Well, now the 21 is coming back. Now they're still getting up to speed. Takes a lap or so to get up to full speed because these are restricted motors in these cars. So the high side is pretty strong. Boy, is it going so Ooh, Don't get below that yellow line there, Mr. Hamlin. Danny Hamlin in the 11, a Nextel Cup rookie. We saw Carl Edwards get penalized going below the yellow line. And making a pass. So Jimmy Johnson, Tony Stewart, easily in front. Mark Martin in third. No. Yes. Is it? Yes. Yeah. We're here for you. Where did Wally. he come from? He was there. <laughs> here comes Elliot Sadler. He's in fifth spot trying to work his way back to the front. Then they're three wide behind the first six. Well, that outside lane really took off this time, didn't it? Oh, it sure did. Bush in the five car. Oh, oh Mark Martin man, oh man, up the hill. Wow, what a great job. Mark Martin did a save in that race car. 
And what was all that smoke back there? I bet that's tire smoke from somebody getting trapped in that Looks like a Jeff behind. Gordon. It is. The 24 car of Jeff Gordon. Got left front, probably cut down. Marty. Marty. Jeff came on the radio and said, guys, we have a left front going down. The caution is now. He said, we have to change this. If it doesn't blow before he gets to pit lane. And tear the fender off. Field is frozen under caution. Remember, it will be a double file restart. Let's take another look. Okay, now watch the five car. He gets underneath the six, gets him loose. Mark does a great job hanging on to this car. So does Jimmy McMurray in that 26. But, you know, that's not something, I mean, that could have been avoided. I think Kyle, I think Mark Martin needs to take a walk down and talk to Kyle after this race because that was a little bit too much too early. Dave? And after they congratulated Mark Martin for a great save, after which Mark said thanks, whoo, they said, we will go down and find out what the urgency was with the five car. And there you see where the 24 car gets in the back of the 17. It caused the fender to go in on the tire. But the 26 car of Jamie McMurray also ran in the outside retaining wall. There's a huge domino effect when somebody three or four car links in front of you or even further slows up. And it reaches deep into the field. That's on board with Junior. Inside. Boy, I tell you, I don't have in the world Mark Martin saved this. Yeah, he shouldn't have saved that car. I mean, that was a heck of a job. And then, like you say, after you're, you get happy after you saved it, then you get mad because of what caused it. Gordon to pit road. Marty. Well, as you can see, Bill, Jeff Gordon coming slowly down pit road. They have to fix the left front fender. Jeff was very calm on the radio, said he ran into Matt Kenseth. That's the biggest issue. They're going to change these left side tires. Now, remember, in this Budweiser shootout format, you must pit under green. This does not count for Jeff Gordon's pit stop. Clay Robinson, the front tire changer, is going to work on the left front fender. Jeff has actually shut the engine off and now taking his gloves off. Marty, I think they said the oil, oil cooler as well. Yeah, the oil yeah. cooler is broken in the car. Exactly, BP. So Jeff is taking his gloves off. This may be terminal for the 2014. Looks that way. I thought it was tire smoke, but I guess in fact it was oil, oil smoke. smoke yeah. Who looks under the hood? You can see the oil puddle underneath the car the, right there. The NASCAR <laughs> official saw it and pointed underneath. Yeah, they're done. All right, so they're going to work underneath the left front of Jeff Gordon. While well, they work on the 24, let you check on the 99 with Matt. Bill, while Gordon in the 24 was trying to make his way back to pit road, Carl Edwards in the 99 came on the radio and said, I have fluid all over the windshield. I don't know who's leaking it, ends up being the 24 Gordon, but I am having difficulty seeing, so they are talking about pitting and pull a tear off from the windshield to help his visibility. To Dave. Matt, the 26 of Jamie McMurray did receive some damage. He said, I got squeezed into the wall by the six sandwich was a word that he used. So they're going to check the damage, especially on the right rear. They're going to change tires and also roll the fender out a little bit to make sure that they have clearance. And that jack, they've had problems with the jack. The team's going to go back to work on it. And it came back down. This team is brand new with Jamie, but that looks like it might be a bit of an equipment problem there. But they'll fix the damage. And Jamie will hope he'll get back out. He's got a tire mark on the left side, damage on the left rear. Now damage on the right. We'll see if he's still quick. Jeff Gordon climbing from his machine. Done in the Budweiser shootout. Talking it over with his crew. Jeff Gordon will start second in the Daytona 500 one week from today. Marty? Well, it uh, actually seems to be sort of a kind of a good mood around down here in the Jeff Gordon uh, camp. Steve Letard had a smile about it. It was a hole in the oil cooler. And uh, did you think it was a tire at that time? Well, I was hoping that's all it was in the fender. But uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, you know, we were running along there, and uh, and I think the 38 or somebody checked up big time. Uh, and and I and I got in the back of Kids at one time, and then they slammed on the brakes even harder. And I tried to tried to go up the racetrack. I don't know if it was somebody ahead of 38 or what, but I just know they all checked up. And it's, uh, it's a shame we had a great race car, man. I was having a blast out there racing with those guys. Even though the bump drafting's out of control, 
um, you know, the, the, the Bud Shootout's a fun race, and uh, just, you know, unfortunately we didn't get to uh, see what the DuPont Chevrolet had for him those last 50 laps. Seemed like you and Jimmy were working awfully well together and kind of worked your way to the front there together. Well, it's really hard to pass. It's, it's really just a, a two-groove, not two-groove racetrack. It's just there's only, everybody's really blocking the, the middle and, you know, and know that you can't go to the outside. So you just wait for a hole to open up through the middle and creep up through there one or two at a time. And uh, we got you know, a good handling race car, which I was real happy about. There, uh, you know, we learned enough to, to take into next week, and we know we got a better car next week. So I'm looking forward to it. I, I hope Jimmy can do it. I was trying to push him, and Kyle Busch, you know, Brian Vickers, we we're all working pretty well together. Uh, just uh, hey, we weren't able to be there at the end. Dave? Marty, the car that Jeff ran into was the 17 of Matt Kenseth. It's the right rear on this black and white number 17 that has the most damage, obviously. They fixed it to the point where they got clearance on the back end, but it's not really smooth back there. So any aerodynamic advantage that they had back there has really been lost. Thanks, Dave. Under the caution here in the Budweiser shootout, NASCAR has asked the driver of car number five, Kyle Busch, to settle down on the racetrack. We'll be back.